I found my passion by purposefully putting myself in situations that would allow me to have more positive experiences by challenging myself, by putting myself in positions that would allow me to display courage and courageous actions and being patient and graceful. So boom, that was a lot, let's break it down. The first thing I started to notice, it just kind of happened honestly because I, I go through phases and sometimes I would watch reality shows because that part of the year it was showing and then when that when the show went off then I wouldn't watch it, right? Because shows are in seasons. So like for example, just to really make it clear, if I were watching like Real Housewives of Potomac, I would watch it when Real Housewives of Potomac was um, being broadcast but then once Real Housewives of Potomac was finished that would be the end of me watching Real Housewives kind of thing but I watched New Jersey too and Beverly Hills sometimes but the point is it's seasonal so then there would be times where I wouldn't be watching reality shows and I started to realize that the times that I wasn't watching reality shows my energy as a person was a lot more calm, kind of like they clone Tyrone situation. So I started testing it and I would go like a month without watching like, or even a week sometimes, or even a day without watching any reality shows. And I was like, wait a minute, something's happening here. So then I expanded and I'm like, okay, let me take some of the music off, whatever. Then I would start watching it again because I would forget and then I would start to notice, what the heck is going on? Like I'm, I'm more upset and my life around me is a little bit more stressful. What is happening? And then I remember, oh yeah, I'm watching those reality shows again. So that is the first thing that happened. And you're probably like, well, what the heck does this have to do with finding your passion? And if that's the case, you're, you need to learn patience as well. Anyway, <laughs> um, it has to do with it because I started clearing the noise out of my mind, okay? It started to become like, okay, well, I don't need to be having energy exchanges with this particular thing because when I do, I'm off my game. And when I'm off my game, I'm not as in tune with the world around me and I am co-creating things that I don't want to experience in my day-to-day -day life. So once the noise started to be cleared, my mind started to be clearer and I'm still not at the point yet, honestly, where I'm meditating every single day. I'm more or less just doing what feels right in each moment and just allowing myself to evolve. And over time, perhaps I'll become someone who meditates regularly, but um, Dick Gregory, didn't meditate regularly and look at him so you know i'm i'm not saying that i will or i won't because it definitely makes me feel great but at the same time i'm just allowing myself to evolve and unfold in the way that i feel like i should and just doing what i'm called to do because that has been working and when i say like doing what i'm called to do if i have a thought that just comes out of nowhere and is like i should volunteer then instead of just like letting that thought go, I will seek out opportunities to volunteer. I will go online. And now I've gotten to the point where I know which organizations I really enjoy volunteering for. And I know a few organizations that I'm like, okay, I'm never coming back here. But I'm finding my, I guess you could say a tribe of people and I'm being of service in my community. like every day in every single way i am giving back to the community i volunteered at nasa observe the moon night that was pretty pretty cool i've never been to nasa before and so um yeah i i went to the white house for a volunteering thing um what else i went to um dc united to volunteer. I've been to some museums to volunteer. I volunteered at, and this was someone invited me to this one. I volunteered at the um, annual couture gala at a 
the mint museum so like you can volunteer and get some pretty cool experiences and you also get to meet some like-minded individuals in unique ways i get to meet so many people out in the community now as a volunteer so many more than i was meeting elsewhere so honestly it, it's pretty cool to be able to do that and it took courage to get myself to the place where i'm like you know what i'm gonna just do it but i did it and the more that i put myself in situations where i'm able to be courageous the more i feel confident and the more the world has shown up for me as well because i'm showing up for myself i'm setting the standard i'm setting the bar for how the universe and the world is going to show up for me because i am showing up for it i'm waking up every day at 4 50 5 o'clock in the a.m every single day the weekends i wake up at six okay i'm working out not every day but i'm doing my face things i'm recording content i'm reading i am i am showing up i'm teaching you know i'm expanding i'm growing i'm learning i'm taking classes i'm joining communities i'm volunteering i'm i'm really out in there i'm emailing i'm getting a new job i'm doing sales i'm doing this i'm 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 doing my art i'm doing stuff you know what i'm saying and i'm energized now and so from there and one step at a time adding 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 more and more and more onto the plate i started to realize wow the plate's expanding and then from there i got to see okay now that i've tried the fish i've tried eggs i've tried the lamb i've tried the wagyu i've tried the filet mignon that my auntie makes that's banging it's delicious i've tried all of these things and now i know what i like i've tried the um yellow kiwi I've tried the, the mango that that's this shape, <laughs> the little yellow ones. I've tried the plantains. I've tried the this, I've tried the that. And now I know what my meal is. I know what I want to eat now. I can finally order because I've tasted everything. So now I know what I want, all right? And so from there, the passion starts to reveal itself. And I realize that I'm passionate about a lot of things. And the more things that I do that I'm passionate about, the more excited I am about life. The more I'm getting out there in the community, the better I feel every single day in every single way. It's just how things happen. And I am excited and thrilled to live my life every single day. But I wasn't always like that. I wasn't, it didn't always feel like this. Like last year sucked, you know? Um, and that, it was a pretty, pretty interesting experience. But at the end of the day, all of the hurdles and things that come our way, you're either going to rise above and persevere and ha and win anyway, or you're gonna lose forever and you're gonna just keep losing, okay? Because when I was not active in the community and active and just like working and sleeping, I was so freaking tired. I was so drained. I was so tired and exhausted. So I had to force myself to start putting things out there. And the good thing is I have a track record of excellence. And if you don't have a track record of excellence, that's fine, but I'm just telling my story and hopefully this will inspire you to know that you are capable too. I'm no different from you. I'm no better than anybody. I'm no worse than anybody either, but I'm no better than anybody. I might be, I might be better at certain things, like have a natural ability to do certain things, but talent beats um, ability when ability doesn't work hard or no yeah yeah practice whatever hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard period but not always but anyway the point is though that i had a track record for excellence and so i realized that when i was in college and i was really really excelling i was so busy but the way that i did it was my first year when I was a freshman, I didn't do anything extra, only school because I was like, and then my first semester, only classes. I didn't look to join any clubs. I wanted to cheer and I ended up doing that. So I would practice cheering. I would practice learning the routines in my dorm room 
and that's what I was doing. I was dancing, practicing. I was going out too. Like, don't don't think that this is the home Betty homemaker story. That's not what I'm saying. But I was practicing and I was focused on school. Then the next semester, I tried out for cheer and I added something else. Then the next semester, I was doing cheer this and this and this, and then I. I'm just throwing these things around. This is not in the order of how it happened, but these are all things that did happen. Then I became the president of the Ameri of the Marketing Association. Then I was in this honor society. Then I was in that. Then I was in the orientation program. Then I hosted the orientation program. Then I wrote the orientation program. So it was kind of like, I just kept, kept adding and adding and adding to my, to my life. So I was like, it occurred to me, like, wait a minute. If that's when I was at my best, I feel like happiest and, and most fulfilled to some degree like I need to get back to that so it's happened so because I have been and I had a really crazy experience too so you know life has a way of sending you curveballs and you either knock that out the park or you get slugged by the ball either way you always have another day to bat okay so remember that too um, but the point is that I found my passion by finding myself. I found my passion for what I wanted to do in the world and how I wanted to show up by showing up for myself first, by putting myself in situations that would allow me to be courageous, not at risk and not stupid, so don't misunderstand that, but giving me spaces to be courageous. I did an IG Live show during the pandemic and I interviewed Grammy award-winning producers. Like, this is real. This is real. Um, Tony award-winning producers. You know, all these people that were actors from The Shy, the woman who started the Honey Bee pad brand. And that was because I was bored. I, I never had an interview series before. So that's what I'm telling you. Sometimes you just gotta hit the ground running and try it and see what happens. I still do interviews. But now I do them for like local artists and stuff just because I like talking to artists. So it's just for fun. But when I was doing it in the pandemic, I thought I wanted an interview series. Like I thought I wanted a, a TV show and or a talk show. And I'm not saying that I don't, but I really enjoy working with children. So I'm kind of like just focused there. Um, but if someone is like, oh man, we're gonna give her a deal. You can still do that though. But, you know, I'm kind of more focused on children right now. But anyway, um, so what was the point of that? Oh, yeah. So I just did it. And the a few times I was nervous. I was so nervous because I'm sending out these emails. I've never had an interview series before. I barely had a YouTube channel. I just had an artist page. And I was like, look, it's the pandemic. I want to start interviewing people. So that's what I did. And I just sent out. I would wake up at seven and I would send emails and DMs to people until eight o'clock in the in the AM. And so for an hour I was just DMing like anybody I saw, even like someone from Ayama Van Zant's team messaged me back like, how did you find me? I'm like, I I I'm what? <laughs> I was just I, I was and I was working in sales at that point. So, you know, I have no issue or qualms about sending somebody an email. I'm, I'm in that inbox immediately. I'm making that phone call. So I just did that and, and people said yes, you know? And it, and then I had a show during the pandemic with really high profile guests and people were messaging me like, how did you, how do you know these people? I'm like, I don't. I just didn't ask for permission. I didn't ask somebody, hey, can you help me start an interview show? I thought I wanna interview people. And it actually came because I wanted mentors. And um, so that's what actually started. It didn't start from me being, I want an interview series. It started because I wanted mentors and nobody around me was all the way like in a mentor space. Like, yes, I have parents, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But I wanted people that from all walks of life that I could just ask the questions that I've always been curious about. And so what I would do was I would target industries that I thought I wanted to be a part of, and then I would just interview those people nonstop. So if I wanted to be in the music industry, I targeted music professionals and I just said, hey, can I interview you? 
because people always say like oh you can ask someone to go to lunch or whatever but why would some random person want to do a a private zoom lunch with you to answer your question but a lot of people want to be on social media and want to be able to say that they've been interviewed so i created the live um because i figured it would be easier for people to say yes to me because they're getting interviewed but really i was just getting the questions that i had answered and so then from there i was like oh i like interviewing da, da, da. but it took some people i was nervous about and some people had like real interesting energies about them and some people i was able to reel them in and then others i wasn't and it's fine but the point is that I did it just occurred naturally it was like an idea that happened and then I tried it and then I and I had a great time with it and then that was the end of that season and I kept going and I kept doing something else and like some people are like well I don't know why you stopped doing your IG live but you know I don't want a life like theirs you know I don't want a life like that person's I want a life that I want and I know what I'm I know I call it like sniffing around I know what I'm sniffing around for I know what energy I'm seeking period and if it's not the right energy, I am not going to do it. And I started to realize from talking to more people, like, maybe I don't want to be in this industry. Maybe I want to do this instead. And then some things happened in life and I just expanded. Then I started doing art and taking that more seriously. And so then I shifted my audience and I started interviewing artists because I'm like, okay, maybe I don't want to do this. So now I'm going to interview artists. And then I thought about doing finance and I almost started reaching out to finance people. But then I was like, uh, I, I definitely love to learn about money. And though I don't know if I want to be like a financial person, you know, so to speak. But at some point, I, I will um, take some classes just because I think it's a really cool thing. So, yes, I found my passion by accident.